Sanders is going to stand up and defend you from the hordes? The thin blue line has kept the hordes from you. And now you're not defending them when they need you, are they? And that's our job in talk radio. There's been a war on police, a war on the military. And now 150 years after the Civil War, we're facing a situation very similar to the one we faced before the Civil War right here in the United States of America. And while we're still enjoying relative peace, there are subterranean rumblings that portend danger ahead. The outrageous acts to which many have become numb remind us of the months and years before the outbreak of the Civil War. In the words of Thomas Corwin, addressed to Abraham Lincoln on January 16, 1861, he wrote, I cannot comprehend the madness of the times. Treason is in the air around us everywhere. As I see it, the state of our union is in the same, most perilous, rather, position it's been in since the 1860s. We are under assault from both inside and out as our government moves to consolidate its domestic power, while at the same time weakening our defenses against the growing power of our global enemies. And all the while, the liberal government media complex watches the storm clouds gather with few keystrokes of reportage, outrage, or resistance. And by now, many of you who listen to this show have realized that we've come to a situation that may threaten our very existence as a nation. This is what will inevitably ensue if we fail to stand up against the forces committed to making it happen. Those are words from Stop the Coming Civil War in the opening chapter written a year ago and more true today than it was then. My sequel will be out in October. It's entitled Government Zero. It is my last non-fiction political book. I don't care what money is offered to me. I will never write another political book after that one. It's my last book. And there's a reason I wrote Government Zero. And the book is not available for you except on a few websites, Amazon, etc. Fine. You can go look at it and see what I'm talking about. Because things have metastasized since Stop the Coming Civil War. I try to warn you in Government Zero how the radical communist left under Barack Obama has now joined forces with the Islamists worldwide in a war against the West. It's the only explanation for what he is actually doing and what we see going on. Okay? It's that simple. So the question is, what are we going to do about it? Tell me what we're going to do about it. Thomas on WMAL, Washington, D.C. Go ahead, please. Hello, Dr. Savage. Just want to say I enjoy your show. I um, I was a police, I was a parole parole officer for thirty years. Worked closely with the parade police. I was a military police officer for six years. I have a master's degree, so I'm very fluent in the police work. However, I have to take issue with you regarding uh, President Obama. He did call those three guys who interrupted that terrorist on that train and, and uh, spoke highly of them. and uh, He did. Them. Really? How come, we did, how come we didn't hear much about it? How come he didn't give them the, President Medal of, the Presidential Medal of Freedom? Instead, he reserves it for uh, poets who couldn't write a screed on a wall. What do you mean he, <clears throat> he said it? No one heard it. Maybe you're the only one who heard it. <coughs> the media covered it. it was, that's where I heard it. Oh, yeah, he muttered a few words. How come he didn't give them the highest award of the land? Well, they just got back into the United States, Dr. Savage. I'm sure. I see. So you're, so you're a fan of Barack Obama. You like what he's doing to the police. No, I don't like what he's doing to the police, but the police are killing unarmed men, not white and black. What, what uh, so, so you are a black radical. I never hear you say anything about that. So you are a member of Black Lives Matter. So you are one of the rabble who hates the police with your master's degree. For years. With your with your master's degree, <clears throat> why don't you just join the Black Panthers and get it over with? Put on one of their their olive drab uniforms. <clears throat> Go scream against roast them in a blanket. You'll feel better, Thomas. You're one of Obama's army. You are the enemy of the police under the camouflage of being a policeman. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Attention, attention. This is an important notification for all Savage Nation listeners. As of tomorrow, September 1st, 2015, the Savage Nation podcast will no longer be uploaded to this channel. 
the new podcast will be uploaded to a different channel. To continue receiving updates and daily podcasts, please go to the new YouTube channel and subscribe at www.youtube.com slash Michael Savage videos. This current channel will continue to upload videos but will focus more on the 2016 presidential candidates and their speeches. To continue receiving daily podcasts of the Savage Nation, please subscribe to the new channel at www.youtube.com slash Michael Savage videos. The link is also posted below the video for your convenience. Thank you. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Blue Monday, I'm a high blue Monday. Got to work like a slave all day. He'll come to It is the Savage Nation. We've been talking about Obama's war on police and how police are being killed across America, namely white police by black thugs. That's right, it's an epidemic. It's going on. And someone has to say something. And we have to say that all lives matter. Not just black lives matter. No, all lives do matter. And we've also got to stand up against the thugs in the Black Lives Matter crowd and understand that many of them are hateful, murderous thugs. And there's a difference between free speech and calling for the murder of police. When they chant pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon. When the Black Panthers are threatening Texas cops, we will start creeping up on you in the darkness. And the president does nothing then you know that it's he and Sharpton who have conspired to see this day arise in the United States of America. And again, I try to warn you what was coming a year ago with Stop the Coming Civil War. I warned you, and if you think that Obama's going to go away quietly in the night, you are a dreamer. You're a real dreamer if you think that this revolutionary communist is going to just simply hand the reins over to Donald Trump. You must be kidding. There's an awful lot of time left for this man to do mischief. And mischief is what he is all about. He will not rest until America is broken, until every avenue of protest is snuffed out. This man is behind it all as sure as I'm sitting here. You say, well, how can you prove that? Well, you put two and two together. And so what I've done for you is we've gone back to the beginning of the war on police we're going to play for you the sound bites, and you'll hear some very familiar voices that you'll recognize right away. Some you won't. The voices are those of Barack Obama, his street thug Al Sharpton, who actually is Al, is Al Sharpton is Barack Obama in a jumpsuit. Al Sharpton is Barack Obama without the smoothness. That's why he took that street thug in and out of the White House secretly a hundred times over the last few years to tell him exactly what to say that he himself could not say. This is how it works. He was sent out to make sure there was a war on police, in my opinion. Then there's Holder, now enjoying a multi-million dollar lifestyle as a lawyer. After wrecking America's peace and harmony, he went back to a law firm. Then there's de Blasio, still ruining New York. Then there's Louis Farrakhan, who asked openly a week ago for men to go out and kill police. He said it. Not one word from the White House at the time. So let's listen to the montage, the cop war montage on the Savage Nation. Since Ferguson and the task force that we put together, we have seen too many instances of what appears to be police officers uh, interacting with individuals uh, primarily African-American, often poor, uh, in ways that raise troubling questions. And you don't judge the fight on one round. Even if we get knocked down, we get up and go to the corner and come out fighting the next round. You won the first round, Mr. Prosecutor, but don't cut your gloves off, because the fight's not over. 
justice will come to Ferguson. Our police officers cannot be and cannot be seen as an occupying force disconnected to the communities that they serve. I'm looking for 10,000 in the midst of the million. 10,000 fearless men who say death is sweeter than continued life under tyranny. Death is sweeter than to continue to live and bury our children. What parents have done for decades who have children of color, especially young men of color, is train them to be very careful when they have a connection with a police officer, when they have an encounter with a police officer. We cannot just go from episode to episode, city to city. There must be a national response. The federal government must come in and intervene on the issues of criminal justice and policing. Then we must rise up and kill those who kill us. Stop them and kill them and let them feel the pain of death that we are feeling. When anybody in this country is not being treated equally under the law, that's a problem. And it's my job as president to help solve it. My friends, you're in the middle of a civil war. It was started when this communist street agitator was sworn in, and it's only just begun. Not since the run-up to the civil war have we as a country been more divided. The battle lines have been drawn, and Barack Obama is the general of the opposition to our way of life. That's my opinion. Where is the media, where is the Republican Party on the execution of a white cop filling a gas tank in Texas, executed by a black criminal, cowardly walked up behind him, shot him in the back of the head, and then emptied his gun 15 shots as he lay on the ground. 15 shots. Obama started this war on police through his dangerous anti-police rhetoric. This maniac has to be impeached for treason. He must be impeached. Of course, we will not get the votes required, but it will start the national dialogue and he will be exposed for what he really is. That's my opinion. Now, I want to take some calls because I think you are all as upset as I am about the so-called Black Lives Matter phonies. This is an anti-white, anti-cop organization who, if they are not called out for who they are, calling for frying pigs, uh, and pig them in a, frying pigs in a blanket, etc., more cops will die, and eventually there will be a reaction that you do not want in this country. Take a look at Syria and you will see what civil war leads to. Civil war is never good. Civil war is bad for everyone. And the reason we are living through this now is because of Barack Obama and his leftist minions. Period. End the story. What do you want me to say to you? Do you want me to say it in a different way, another way? You want me to invent something? I'm telling you what's going on. I see what's going on. And if you don't like my opinion, tell me where I'm wrong. Tell me where I am wrong. There is a war against white police being killed by black criminals. And the media says nothing. They won't even identify the killer, let alone condemn the killer. And it all goes up to the top. A fish rots from the head down. Never forget that. WMAL Kipper, what's on your mind? Go ahead, please. How are you doing today, Dr. Savage? Can you hear me? I don't answer. I don't answer those questions. We are right. not having. We're not having a family conversation. It's not. How are you? It's a national show. Goodbye. I can't take it. Call screen is supposed to tell you. Don't ask me how I am. That's not a matter of how I am. Have something to say or don't get on the air. That's all. I, I'm sorry to lose my temper. I'm very emotional right now, and I'm very exhausted from this right now. I had a very bad weekend, by the way, when I see a cop executed and the rat vermin in the media don't say a word. CNN, criminals, NBC, ABC, CBS, criminals, 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 drug addicts, perverts, criminals. I can't take it anymore. This Marxist, Islamist, cowardly media crawling on their hands and knees before the Islamist hordes, crawling on their hands and knees before the hordes of police killers, crawling on their hands and knees 
passing for newsmen, these useless 